Hello and welcome Hello. everybody. Thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. We are back again and we have two very special guests for the live stream this evening. Uh, I'd like to introduce and give a big thank you to uh, Connor Gibson, um, AIA graduate from Sydney uh, and expert in VR, AR and game programming. Um, so thank you Connor for joining us tonight. My pleasure, thank you. And uh, alongside Connor, we do have a, another special guest with us tonight, uh, AIE d game design teacher, Sean from Adelaide. So thank you so much for joining us, Sean. No worries, happy to be here. So um, I'm really excited. To, uh, we're going to get into the world of VR AI, which is definitely a big emerging industry. Um, and I would love to know more about the two gentlemen I'm joined by know a lot more than I do. Um, so hopefully we're all going to be part of the learning curve tonight. Um, and for anyone out there who does have viewer questions throughout tonight's live stream, please feel free to pop your questions in our YouTube or Facebook chat. Um, and Sean and Connor will do their best to get them answered. Um, Connor was a little bit weary of throwing people throwing him curveballs tonight. So definitely Definitely let's challenge him and throw him some curveball questions <laughs> um, and let's see how they land. But uh, thank you again for joining us. And Sean, I'll uh, hand over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, so, Connor, do you want to just introduce yourself and uh, let us know a little bit about yourself and uh, all that good stuff? Yeah, sure. So, um, hi, everyone. It's, uh, my name is Connor Gibson. Um, I am the head of immersive technologies at TradeyBot Industries, which is my current um, employment. Well, I have been in the industry since 2014, which I think is the year I graduated. So I've been around in this um, field for quite a while. I've worked on uh, multiple types of areas. I've worked in marketing. Um, I've worked in, uh, in games. And I've now graduated on to serious um, training simulations, um, such as uh, apps that teach you how to do a range of skills. Yeah, awesome. Um, so, did you have any experience in this sort of stuff before you came to AIE back in, what, 2012, was it? If you graduated in 2014? Um, no, I didn't have any experience whatsoever. Well, I did do the, uh, I think back then, I'm not sure if you guys still want it now, you had a holiday course, I think, for one yeah. week, or I think three holidays, we came in and we did that. I, I learned um, basic C Sharp, I think, in those lessons, or C++. And after doing that, I kind of found my calling. I was never a good yeah. drawer. I couldn't uh, model anything for the life of me, but I could write code. And I, I wasn't great at it, but I, you know, found my passion and I slowly increased my skills as years went by. Yeah, nice. So yeah, do you reckon? Um, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, do you reckon? Uh, like, like, what, what do you reckon brought you to that holiday course originally? Like. Do you have an interest in programming or anything like that before then, or? Oh, um, I've had experience, uh, not experience, uh, interest in games since, oh, I can't remember the exact age, but I do remember, um, I think it was my mum's boss had an Xbox original um, and we were playing Halo. And I think ever since then, I've kind of been all over games. And I used to collect those monthly, um, they no longer do them anymore, but I think like PlayStation, Xbox, Xbox had uh, those magazines that would send out with free discs. And I saw yep. an ad for AIE, and it's just like, do you want to be a game programmer slash designer slash artist? I'm like, yeah, I do. It's my, you know, <laughs> my, my life, basically. And I, from then on, it was, you know, my fate was sealed. I kind of knew this was the place I want to go. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, leading on from that, uh, what's your favorite game? I think everyone wants to know. Uh, I know it's a hard uh, question. It is a hard question. Like, I would say, like, based on the history I've, I've had in gaming, I would say the Halo series would be mm -hmm. my go-to. That's the one, like, you hear, you know, veterans in the field who talk about playing Nintendo 64, playing Super, Super Mario and the, on the, the old school Nintendo. Halo was that for me. It was the one that... Nice. Um, Got me interested. Got um, you know, got me sitting down in front of a TV or a computer. Um, so that would be my favorite game. Moving on from that, I am a huge story-driven buff. I'd rather play a good story game rather than play a multiplayer game. So yeah. like those Elder Scrolls games, those uh, Naughty Dog style games. I'm all over those as well. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. So. Cast your mind back to 2012, 2013, that kind of time when you started studying. Did you think back then that you'd be working with 
VR and AR when you graduated? No, I thought I'd be an AI um, or shader kind of person, but I learned very quickly that shaders are not my cup of tea. I think I did. Yeah, I think it was like one month into uh, my second year, and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying my best here. Um, but um, around then, that's when um, the Oculus Rift did its Kickstarter. I'm like, oh, what's yeah. this? You know, the holodeck from Star Trek? You know, this sounds interesting. Um, or the Matrix. People were obviously overselling it then. They would say it would be, you know, like the Star Trek holodeck and, people, you know, the concept art and whatnot. But when I saw that, I kind of went, I want to know more. Um, and I guess I picked the right topic at the right time. It's, it's always a good idea to jump on new technology when it arises. Yeah, I was going to be an AI guy. But I guess Fair enough. Turn out <laughs> Definitely. I think, um, I mean, speaking personally, I think VR and AI is a little bit more, uh, a little more interesting to talk about than AI is. Um, yeah. I've AI is a bit dry, AI isn't it? And fall asleep. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. machine learning. It's interesting, but. Um, yeah, it's a lot of people who know way too much more than you trying to talk real. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So when you graduated, did you did you have a job ready to go at that point? Or what went on uh, after you graduated to get you to where you are now? Um, I did not have a job straight out of um, uni, uh, uni AIE. Um, I did do uh the incubator course i'm not sure if it's still called the same course yeah yeah the gdmo um, and then incubator yeah yeah i signed up to that for two years or one year so but i did stay there for two or so years doing uh, my project called neon rain as you can see here i did that with five i think it was eight other developers at the time but as years went by it slowly went down to three or four developers but yeah that was a huge learning experience to be up um back then um there was no move controllers no hand tracking no nothing it was only three degrees of freedom and the xbox 360 controller so like every developer out there and uh, some things worked some things did not um, but yeah awesome game um sadly it didn't go anywhere after a few years of development. Um, we did lose a few members due to personal and other reasons and kind of realized that this project was a bit too big of a scope for the team size. But, um, it, you know, everyone in the team was proud of it. Um, and eventually, I think this game got me a job at uh, my next stage in my life. So it wasn't all for naught. Um, so, yeah. Right. Do you want to, do you want to talk about that? Game, Pardon? Do you want to talk about that next stage where you, where you moved on from here? Um, yeah, so uh, about, so straight out of uni, um, like I said, I didn't get a job straight away. I wasn't the best programmer in the class. I wasn't that, you know, one the kid that gets a job when he's in his like halfway through his second year. Um, kudos to you if you do though, great job. Um, but no, I, um, I realized that, you know, sometimes to get a job in programming, you have to put in your, you know, some time aside to keep practicing your skills. Um, like I, I left AIE with, you know, maybe 30%, 40% of the knowledge I have. And over the next two years, I got to 80. Um, and mainly through this incubator uh, program. But after that, um, we swear word, I hope that's enough. <laughs> Um, but yeah, after I uh, worked on this for a while, I um, did a couple of odd jobs here and there. Um, I worked at a company called Impact Wall in the entertainment quarter, um, where it wasn't entirely VR. It's a giant touch screen that kids threw balls at, and you know, if you had a Nerf gun, you could shoot the zombies on the TV screen. Um, that was an interesting job. Um, and then from there, I moved on to uh, working at the uh, one of the big four banks in Australia through another company making less gamey um, applications, but more more like serious apps that uh, people in banks would use. Um, I can't ex can't go into too much detail about what exactly I did, but I can explain one of them, which was a VR app that was designed to uh, look for insider trading. Um, basically, you had like it's like a chessboard of shareholders and you would put
put your avatars on the chessboard, so to speak, and it would show up all the information. And if I put two chessboards on the one thing, the machine learning would find out if there's any anything dodgy going on and highlight them, saying, you know, like, this person sold this share at this time and this person bought straight after. You should look into that. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, yeah, very serious stuff that uh, was... I would love to talk about for our hours, but yeah. <laughs> that, that's as detailed as I can go. Um, I, I'm going to just jump in very quickly here. So, uh, I've got a question, not from a viewer, um, but for the viewers actually. Uh, so just recently we were talking, or you were talking about this game that you had created in the incubator. Um, but for those yeah. that don't, or that are watching tonight and joining, um, that don't know what the incubator is, um, Connor, could you be able to just explain that process and uh, I, I guess what it's like being a, a incubator student? Sure. Um, so the incubator program is, more of an extension of your second year final project in a way where before you graduate in your second year you get is it 10 weeks to make a project at the, um it's about three months so yeah, three months, yeah. 12, yeah. 12 yeah. weeks i think yeah 12 weeks yeah. yeah yeah and so with the incubator program you basically do that again or you keep working on top of it some teams i think when my year they kept working on their year two games and some people start again from scratch um, but you will go through a more serious training on how to actually manage a small business team. Um, so they'll tell you how to uh, assign tasks for each other, manage a business. Um, I think you do get a diploma in business management out of doing the incubator. Um, yeah, so you do, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a definitely a must-do course if you want to enter the field being your own boss or at least trying to release your own game. Like most companies out there, if you want to get a job, you have to release, have one game on the market. Um, and sometimes your second year game might be enough, but sometimes you want to be like, no, I want to release more games. An incubator program is a great way to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's uh, developed a little bit from maybe when you did it. It's very, very similar. Oh, it it is still developing um, a game. And uh, the diploma you do get at the end of that, it's a graduate diploma. So you do the graduate diploma for one year and then you go into the incubator for the, the year following. But um, I'm not lying when I say it's actually my favourite, uh, I guess, course that AIA offers. I absolutely love it because um, it does, it teaches you the business side of uh, the games and film. Um, and it's, uh, for me, it's really interesting. Uh, and I know for a lot of people out there that want to know that side as well. Well, it is really interesting. Plus, you get to develop games like uh, we see here that are pretty cool and, yeah, definitely end up getting your jobs. So thank you for answering, also, answering that one. It's also a great chance to um, learn more about what you want to be specialised in. Like, as I mentioned before, when I was doing my second year, uh, you, you learn, like, a new topic every month um, or so. Um, when in Incubator, like, by then I'm like, I want to be a VR developer. And I had two whole years to just knuckle down and learn more and more about VR. So yeah. it's a great opportunity to even specialize your skills um, through self-learning as well. Like if you want to be an AI developer, you know, incubator, you know, you could be the AI guy in your team and you don't have to worry about having to learn shaders or, yeah. or matrices. That brings back nightmares. Um, <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Connor. I'll uh, throw it back to Sean. Yeah, cool. So you're at TradyBot now. Do you want to tell us a little bit about TradyBot? Sure. Um, so here at TradyBot, um, what we do is we do create apps that empower students and employees in the um, who want to be get more experience in the trade field. So what I mean by that is you may be in high school trying to figure out what you want to do in life or and you know, especially in the year of COVID, you know, there's a lot of students out there who might not think that their career is quite stable now. Um, and being a tradie um, is actually a very well-paying profession. Uh, for example, being a spray painter, which is one of the apps we created, if you are, you know, decent, you can earn easily six figures um, just for painting, like, you know, the most expensive cars in the world or even spray painting tanks. So what we created is... Uh, a VR simulation software that allows you to spend a day in the life of that said trade. So, you know, if you want to be a spray painter, put it on for 10 minutes, you're painting panels and whatnot, um, you're building your own cars. Um, that's one aspect of what we do. And we also design more serious training apps, such as Bravis, which walks you through 
um, how to do more complicated tasks for people who are either at TAFE or in the field who just need to um, polish up their skills. Yeah, right. Would you say, um, uh, maybe, I'm asked, uh, maybe I'm answering the question for you, but I look at uh, just the footage we're looking at now of the spray painting and it feels like VR has really opened up, like, like this sort of thing wasn't really possible before VR because it would just be on a screen, you'd just be clicking or whatever. Whereas now we can uh, we can physically spray paint and all that sort of stuff. So do you think it's opened up um, more opportunities for teaching these practical skills that were otherwise, you know, you kind of had to leave school in order to get them? A hundred percent. I think some stat, uh, statics um, have said that like using VR, even if it's, if it's for something as simple as watching a 360 video on how to be safe in your workplace, um, gets a 90% more retention rate than just looking at a monitor on your, on your desktop. Um, being immersed and surrounded by the environment you're in just adds a whole new dimension. And with the introduction of hand tracking and controllers, you, know, you can pick up things in your object. I've seen some companies out there who have like 3D scanned, uh, let's say like a crime scene and you are now a, a detective in the crime scene who now has to find all the clues to find out what happened. Like you wouldn't get that. Um, I guess you would get that going to uni, but it might be like us, you know, tens of tens of thousands of dollars to set up a fake crime scene. So with VR, you can set that up for maybe one or two thousand dollars with a decent computer and a headset. So it's definitely made training more efficient and also cheaper. Um, like with spray painting, I think it costs like $15,000 just to get a student to a stage where they can pick up a spray gun for real and paint. And it also takes 40 minutes, half an hour to get all the equipment on them. You know, you can get this headset, stick it on and have a, a student spray paint them on their first day in TAFE. Um, so it's definitely changing the, in the industry. Yeah, cool. Um, one of the other things I'm noticing in the footage is you've got that, like, uh, I guess a custom controller for the for the spray gun. Um, what do you reckon, like, like that sort of thing? Is that some sort of custom device, or is that like a skin on top of a normal controller? I would have one on me if I was near me. It, it is a um, 3D printed mount. So, with some VR training experiences, you you have your your standard. Trying to pick up my headset without breaking it. Your basic uh, controller like this, and that's good enough for some experiences. But if you really want to give uh, the experience of holding a real life device, that's the path we go go down. Um, Vive does have their own version version using um, the Vive trackers. Um, it's not 100% necessary for some, but uh, we find that some training uh, apps do benefit from that. I think firefighting. Some VR firefighting apps do something very similar where you've got a fake hose and you have to pull the lever back to, it, um, to, to put out the fire. So yeah, it's definitely not a, a need, but it definitely helps. It adds that extra 20% on top. Yeah, totally. So I guess uh, one of the big things about VR is it's you know an emerging technology. Um, you know, I guess the Rift what came out 2016, so it's pretty recent. Um, the consumer version, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so how do you make sure that you're like staying up to date with all of the movement in the AVR and AR space? Is that something that's kind of codified in the job? You've got, to, you've got time to learn or is that something you have to do outside? Um, it's definitely something you have to be on top of. Um, VR has only recently become consumer friendly. Like it took like a solid six, seven years before people, you know, like like my aunts didn't know what VR was when I was working on it. Now I can talk about a VR headset and like, oh yes, that thing that you put your phone in um, and look around, I know what VR is now. Um, so it's finally reaching a stage where it's kind of been standardized and it's leveling out. There's nothing too crazy coming out, but you should still be aware of the, um, the latest tech, especially with serious training apps. Um, if you're making a VR game, maybe just they up to date with the latest Oculus headset or Vive headset. But if you're doing training, what such as what I'm doing, you know, there's there's you know pieces of hardware that allow you to do like pick up objects in VR and actually feel the objects you're picking up or eye tracking. 
I think Vive just sneakily announced that they're making a um, mouth tracking device for their Vive, so you can um, do some facial capture. So yeah, with, in the serious training, definitely need to keep up on the latest tech. Um, that being said, you don't, you won't always be using the latest tech. You know, there's a lot of niche devices out there that look cool but will phase out pretty quickly. So you have to be careful in what you what you use and what you don't. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. There's a lot right. of starters out there trying to, you know, do the next best thing. Yeah, totally. So I guess a, a dual question then. Um, where do you see like the VR AR technology going in the future? Let's say in the next five, ten years. And where do you see yourself in that picture? Still working in VR, still doing all that sort of stuff? Um, I always want to be in VR. Um, I say that now I'm still young, um, but I can see myself still working in VR for the next 25, 30 years. Um, but VR, I with it used to be very heavy on PC. You had to have you know that six thousand dollar PC with that you know one thousand dollar graphics card to run the most basic apps. Now with standalone headsets, it's becoming more mainstream. Um, and with 5G coming around the corner, I can see VR becoming more of a cloud service um, where you no longer need a PC to run your your VR headset. You can just connect to the cloud. But I personally still feel with serious training, you will need a PC to run. Like, it really depends on what kind of field you want to go down. But um, yeah, VR, I can see probably in the next five to 10 years, you would have like one-to-one -one vision in your headsets, you know, no, you know, 120 degrees of uh, view. I can definitely see that being a thing. And eye tracking, we need eye tracking. Um, that's a huge performance killer. Um, if you're looking around and everything's rendering up 4K or whatever, um, where with eye tracking you can, I'm not going to get too technical, but it, it, it renders what you're looking at in more detail and blurs everything else in the distance. Right. You, you lost cool. me at the word technical. <laughs> um, <laughs> but speaking of, uh, very quickly, I'll jump in. Speaking of things that did lose me, uh, we do have a question that's come through from a viewer. Um, now, Sean and Connor, you'll definitely understand this one. This one flew, flew over my head a little bit, but I'll uh, pop it up on screen here for us. Um, oh, no, didn't like that one. Okay, right, that all, is right. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. all right. All right, so... Um, oh, no, that is not liking it. Okay, so I apologise, we've... Uh, Clearly got a bit of a timer issue happening on screen. <laughs> uh, but I'll just read out the question then uh, for us while I also figure out how to get that off screen. Um, but uh, a YouTube viewer has asked, is it possible to use any other VR headsets like the PSVR for making VR games? Uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> um, do you have any experience in the side of things, Connor, that you want to touch on or...? With PlayStation, no. Um, I do know you probably need a PlayStation a PC, so to develop for the PlayStation. So I would guess yeah. that you. So I guess but there's I two ways of looking at it. Uh, like, like, because if you're building a game for PlayStation, obviously there's that whole business you've got to kind of yeah. got to be in with PlayStation. There, I know there is um, there is some ways you can get the. PSVR headset to work with PC, but it's not supported by people like Sony at all. It's, it's like a an open source hack, basically. So, yes, but mm, a bit hard, a bit difficult. Yeah. If you do want to enter the VR development um, field and you don't want to go buy a $600 headset, use your phone. Um, yeah. It's like Oculus, I think. Oh, wait, no, that's been discontinued. I was going to say you can use the Oculus uh, like Go um, gear. gear. Yeah, but yeah. There's, there's still Google Cardboard. That's still a very entry-level VR headset um, that you could use. You don't need to you know, spend thousands of dollars. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you do want to get the VR field, start with mobile. Um, and then if you do have a bit of money on the side or you do have a decent laptop, buy a Rift S. I think they're going pretty cheap secondhandly or refurbished. Um, I think they're like, what, $400? Yeah, so I would start there. Yeah, cool. I, I think I think those, you know, the, the standalone headsets like the, the Quest are basically just like flagship phones anyway. 
in terms of the hardware that's yeah. in them. So your phone will be quite capable of doing this sort of stuff, assuming you've got like a, you know, an S10 or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Cool. Um, alrighty. Um, so I guess what are we looking at? Uh, we've got a little bit of time left. So. Uh, I guess an open question, what's sort of, if you had to give any advice to your past self uh, wanting to get into VR, what would that advice be? What should people focus on? Uh, oh, that's, that is a, a hard and open question. I would tell them, or tell me. Um, or them, not, either way works. Yeah, not to try and make the next matrix straight off the bat um the tech the, the technology isn't there um as i mentioned uh earlier like when they did the vive kickstarter um this is like the Vive kickstarter they're saying oh it's going to be the new matrix it's going to be the new um holodeck and he had developers all over the world promising you know they'll be making that and you're just going to disappoint yourself and potentially customers like be aware where the technology is at and make an app that is suited for that technology. Especially if you want to get your game on Oculus Store, they've got strict rules on what passes and what doesn't. Um, that being said, though, like, also do push the boundaries a little bit, but do that privately. Don't try and put that into a public app. That's one thing I learned pretty. I learned that the hard way um with you know neon rain i started developing you know, some really interesting features and in that we tried to push it to the limits and then we went to a stage where it's like it was not running well on even the most high end pcs because the technology just wasn't there yet so yeah fair enough VR so... is still cutting edge but um it's 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 a growing technology sometimes it's better to wait for that technology to catch up before you make your next best idea yeah, so know the limits and push on them, but don't try and break immediately through them uh, or don't yeah. promise that you're going to break through them. Yeah. yeah. Unless cool. you're trying to I don't think it's worth your time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Um, well, thank you, Connor. I think Matt has a few things he wants to wants to reel off. Is that correct, Matt? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Sean, and thank you uh, so much, Connor. Um, one thing before I kind of get stuck into a little bit of AI stuff, um, Connor, you did have a bit of an announcement that you wanted to um, speak with uh, our viewers about in yes. regards to TradyBot. Yes, so um, I, I don't think I've said this before, but VR is still a very young and upcoming technology. Yes, it's been around for seven years, but only recently has it been picked up by some of the biggest companies in the world. And one thing we've noticed with other VR developers out there, the need for talent. Um, there are people out there, like I've been to open days, I've gone and looked at students, students and they're not making VR stuff. Um, so I've you know, spoken to you know, some of my uh, people and you know, if you want to get into VR and if you feel like it's something you're interested in, we may be able to offer you, you know, if you're looking for some work experience, you know, maybe you know, once a week, once a month, open to discussion. If you're interested in that, you know, hit me up with an email. I'm getting in touch. You know, we need VR developers uh, ASAP. The technology is growing so quickly that companies all over the all over the web can't catch up. So, you know, send me an email, show me what you've done, get, um, you know, show me that you're interested and yeah, we might be able to, you know, get some work for you if you're interested. Awesome. Um, I, for those that are interested, I did just pop uh, Connor's email into our Facebook and YouTube chat as well. Um, so no please plans. do, yeah, please do um, reach out. As as he said, like VR AR is such a growing and powerful industry, and we can't wait to see um, what work there will still be, uh, or there's a lot still to be done. But uh, what creations there will be over the next few years by uh, fabulous graduates. Um, awesome. So thank you so much, Connor. Uh, I am just going to very quickly jump onto our AI website because uh, if anyone was interested or should say was, uh, is interested uh, in learning more about VR, programming, AR, um, it, just games, film, uh, design, 
uh, all sorts of areas these days, um, please feel free to jump onto the AIE website, so aie.edu.au. Uh, we have a lot of resources here on um, the website for you. So we've got our courses, um, we've got different workshops and events that uh, we always run. We've got information um, about the advanced diplomas. Um, the next upcoming event, which are always handy um, for students to learn more at. Uh, we've got information evening coming up pretty soon, uh, March 18th. We've definitely still got some slots available. So get on, register, come along, um, and a teacher from each of our streams will be giving a presentation uh, to students, just letting them know a little bit more about what it is you'll be actually studying at AI. Um, we've also got Industry Experience Day and Open Day as well. So they are completely free events um, and definitely a resource for you to use. Um, if not, please do feel free as well to get in contact with your local AIE campus. We're always happy to uh, host students here, speak with students and uh, I guess help kickstart their journey. So get in contact with your local AIE campus. Awesome. Uh, so thank you so much. A big, big thank you to Connor and Sean for being with us tonight. I uh, hope everyone did enjoy the live stream uh, and that does wrap us up. We wish everyone a happy uh, Wednesday evening and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Yeah. See you guys.